Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. John 1 verse 3. Sometimes my words are quite powerful. I've quieted the room of people through my words. I've made people laugh through my words and cry. I've made a marriage through my words. I've even silenced Emma Jenkinson with my words. And if you knew three-year-old Emma Jenkins, then you'd know what an achievement that really is. The word that John is introducing to us is powerful. Jesus is the word, the word through whom we hear God's voice. But this word isn't just about communication, it's also about creation. Jesus is also the word through whom God made the world. John begins with a deliberate echo of the opening of Genesis, in the beginning. As we saw when we looked at verse 1, John is retelling the story of creation with Jesus the Word at the centre. In Genesis 1, God spoke and the world came into being. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. The psalmist says, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made, their starry host by the breath of his, from his mouth. Psalm 33 verse 6. My words can be powerful, but I've never made a tree with my words, or the heavens, or their starry host. God spoke, and the universe came into existence. And the word that God spoke was Jesus. Through him all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. We can't understand the mechanics of this act. God the Father spoke, the word he spoke was Jesus, and through that word, the world was created. Creation took place through the meditation of the Son. The Father is the architect, and Jesus is the plan. Jesus is the model, the prototype, the pattern of creation. There's a lovely description of the process of creation in Proverbs 8. Wisdom personified speaks. It is, I think, a picture of Jesus. Jesus describes how he witnessed creation and then adds, then I was beside him like a master workman and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the children of man. And that's from Proverbs 8, verses 13, 31. The image is of the father and son working side by side. The father conceives the plan, the world, in all its beauty and complexity. And Jesus is the master workman constructing the plan of the father. And did you notice that they're having fun together? The son delights in the plan of the father. The father delights in the execution of that plan by the son. Why? Because the son himself is the plan. I was his daily delight. You might always almost imagine the son saying to the father, Oh, I love what you've planned for those mountains. Wow, that waterfall is amazing. And the father says to the son, You've done an amazing job with those dragonflies. That's lovely workmanship. Jesus rejoices in the world they are making together. And he especially delights in humanity because we're made in the image of the triune God. More than anywhere else, this is where Jesus sees his Father's glory reflected in creation. Jesus is that word through whom God creates, and this is what we're going to see played out in the rest of John's Gospel. John is trailing his story. We're not going to see the acts of creation, the work that's been done. We're going to see the acts of recreation. We're going to see Jesus commanding the waves, feeding the hungry, and restoring the sick. Jesus is not just a preacher or a healer. He is the creator walking in his creation. 
and as he touches the sick and breaks food to feed the hungry, he's giving us a glimpse of the future. The word of God is the world remaking the world. When you read the stories of Jesus, you are seeing the future in creation. And what a glorious future it is. This is the meditation and prayer. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that had been made. At his word, worlds were framed. He commanded it all done. Heaven and earth and depths of ocean. In their, in their, their fold, order one that grows beneath the shining of the moon and burning of the sun, evermore and evermore. Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you. You are the image of an invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in you all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or powers or rules or authorities, all things have been created through you and for you. You are before all things, and in you all things hold together. And you are the head of the body of the church. You are beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything you might have this supremacy. For God was pleased to have his fulfilment dwell in you, and through you to reconcile himself of all things, whether on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through your blood that you shed on the cross. Amen.